Now let's try to understand what is the estimation life cycle stages. So when we talk about a project estimation, it's not just the creation of estimate phase that we're talking about. There are four phases that are involved here. At the start of the project, before even we start the estimation process, we actually start to prepare for the estimate. In this particular phase, we try to gather all the data about the project. We try to have uh, some of the work breakdown structure created. We try to have the estimation approach identified and gather the historical data and all the information based on which we will create the estimates. The next phase is creating actual estimates, wherein the team works together, they sit together, and they try to create estimates, provide uh, them to the customers, and try to get an approval. The next phase which spans pretty much for the entire project is managing those estimates, which means not only checking whether uh, we are going as per our estimates, so which means checking whether our plans and actuals are meeting and we are on track with that, but also refining the estimates if the environment has changed, if the scope has changed, if the, uh, the project characteristics have changed. So this is again a, a process that spans across the entire project. And we also have need to think about the improved estimation process, which means we not only consider the estimations that are given at one time, but how our organization's estimation process is uh, being executed. Are there any opportunities for improving the estimation process as well? So these are the various phases that are involved um, in the estimation life cycle. So when we talk about preparing for estimates, we consider various factors. We try to gather all the project documents, which involves the, uh, the scope that is provided by the customers. If we have requirements clarification happening, then uh, what we can do, uh, I mean, we need to have enough details or data collected about the project documents. We need to have experts who are not only experts in the project's technology or domain, but they are also experts in the estimation process. They know how the estimation process works, what are the tools and techniques that are involved, and uh, what approach is most uh, practical approach for this particular project. Then we uh, need to understand different estimation techniques. We also need to understand what are the constraints and assumptions for this specific project that we are working on. And if there are any additional influences that are involved, we also need to have all the historical project information available with us. We need to make sure that we have the project repository available in our organization, which tells us how much data uh, has been the case for the previous projects, which might mean how much efforts were taken by the previous project, how much cost was involved, how much was the resources that were, that were put onto those projects. So we need to have all of this historical information which we will be using for creating our estimation approach. And this particular phase gives us the estimation approach. How are we going to derive our estimates? How are we going to manage our estimates? How are we going to communicate our estimates to our customers? And then how much is the scope for variations in the, uh, in the estimations? Is there a range or is there an agreement where we can have a, a delta between plan and actual? So we need to have all of this data that we need to communicate to our stakeholders and record them. The next phase is creating the estimate, wherein we use the project estimation approach that we have finalized for a specific project. We use all other estimation information, which means the project requirements document, the scope document, and your risk registers, and all of the uh, information that is available for you. We will have the estimators providing us the specific estimates. We will have the enterprise environmental factors, and we will have organizational process assets as well. If the organization requires a particular process to be followed, let's say an organization is a CMMI or ISO certified, it would have its process requirements. So those also need to be factored in when we are deriving the estimates. When we are creating the estimates, they can be either of three types or three categories. We can have analogous estimates, we can have parametric estimates, or we can have bottom-up estimates. And then at the end of it, we have completed estimates. And what was the basis of this estimate also documented for further reference. Now what we do in the next phase is a manage estimates phase. In this manage estimates phase, we have the baseline estimates that were given in the initial stage of the project. And we also get approved changes. We also have, we have seen scenarios where the customer requirements keep changing. So there might be change request or enhancement request or a defect request that might be coming up. And we have to deal with them 
which means the scope is changing, which means your estimates and the timelines are also changing in line with that. We will have a resource plan, so if the resources are getting added or reduced or if they have any vacation plans or if they are not available or if they leave the project, then, then also our estimates are going to get impacted. So we need to have that information as well. We will have our work performance information, we will have our organization process assets and our project estimation approach. We will use that and we will have uh, that for managing the estimate. So we will periodically track how we are going uh, against our estimates. So what is our plan versus actual and we'll keep revising our estimates. So the outcome of this will get the updated estimates, we will have the updated forecasts and updated change request log and reported uh, something that will communicate to everyone. Another phase which we do not follow sometimes uh, specifically in the organizations but which is very important phase is improving the estimation process. It is not only important that we estimate for a specific project and give our estimates to the customers but we also try to improve our estimation process. So in this particular process we try to see what were our baseline estimates, what was our approach for estimations, our historical project data um, and we also try to look at our forecasts and change versus actual data, stakeholder feedback, customer feedback and we try to get all of this uh, feedback and then we try to do an analysis where we actually assess our estimation process, we determine the root causes and the lessons learned, what is working, what is not working in our estimation process and develop an action plan and then implement that action plan, share the lessons learned with all the key stakeholders and make sure that this improvement is happening when you do the estimation next time. So this is again in line with our continuous improvement philosophy wherein you review your estimation process, your estimation methodology and assess it objectively and identify the enhancements based on that. So let's look at what are the categories of estimation techniques. So here we are, these are not specific estimation techniques but the categories of those estimation techniques. The, uh, the top level estimation technique is usually analogous estimation technique which is a very high level estimation technique or a top down estimation technique. We also use parametric techniques which where we use parametric models, mathematical uh, queries and uh, calculations for estimations and we also use bottom up estimations where we detail down to the work package level, we create this work breakdown structure that we are seeing right now, we have all the project and multiple phases of those projects, the deliverables of those phases and individual specific work packages and even to the task level. We create the work breakdown structure, then we identify or estimate at the work breakdown structure and we roll up uh, to the top for those estimates. So the first category of estimates which is macro or analogous estimates, it's also called as top down estimation. And this particular technique we use when we have little information about the project. We, we, are, we are having very high level information, the scope is very vague or we have just few liners description of the project. Then we can use this top down approach. It can also be used when we are, um, an, an, the project that we are working on is very similar to the project that we have used earlier or that we have worked on earlier. So the historical data that we have with us can be related with the project that we are working on. So in that case we can get a ballpark number or a high level guesstimate of the project. It is also called as a rough order of magnitude or a conceptual or preliminary estimate. This is not the final estimate, we know this is not with 100% confidence but this is a ballpark number, this is a guesstimate that we are providing at this stage. And the specific techniques that are underneath uh, this analogous techniques are ratio estimate. In this case we identify the ratio or the distribution amongst various components of your project. So for example we can say that design cost is 30% of my total cost, coding cost is usually 30% of my total cost and testing is 40% of the total cost. Which what that means is I'm trying to identify some ratio based on which I can do a guesstimate, based on which I can provide or come up with some kind of numbers that can be used as a guideline. The next is a power series which uses a semi logarithmic scale and the graphical representation which is a power quotient and varies depending upon the project. So it, we can use a semi logarithmic scale and based on that we can have the project specific data club and we can uh, extrapolate the data to be used as estimates. We also use range based estimates 
which means instead of providing the specific exact estimate number or exact estimate count, we can provide an estimate range. So what I can say is a project or a project that I'm working on can be delivered within three to five man months and the cost will be in the range of 100 to 140,000. So I'm not specifying or quoting a specific number, but I'm providing a range. So this is called as a range based estimation. Or we can also have a three point estimation wherein we use a statistical probability outcome based on an weighted average. So we also consider the probability as well as we consider the weights attached to the estimates and then we try to uh, eliminate some of the estimation errors and have some predictable estimates coming out of it. The next category is called as parametric technique. This uses various statistical relationship between the historical data and other variables to uh, get the estimates. So for it is using uh, activity duration and cost, it is quantitatively determined by multiplying the quantity of the work uh, by the historical cost and the duration. So an example of this, let's say a person or a labor takes five hours to dig a three feet deep well that is ten feet long. So we have this historical data available with us and now a same resource is going to do an, uh, the same digging work but now it is twenty feet uh, the well. So in this case, we know that other parameters are not changing. So in this case, the amount will be double, which is 10 hours, so which is in proportion to the data that we have. So if we have uh, this kind of comparison available, then we can use parametric techniques and come up with some kind of approximate data that can be projected as estimates. We can also use macro, micro or bottom-up techniques. Uh, the prerequisite for this particular technique is you need to have a work breakdown structure you need to have the detailed uh, task level breakdown of the bigger module, the sub modules, the work packages and tasks and you will estimate at the task level at the lowest level then you will sum up at the work package level and then in the same manner you can keep on summing up at the parent level. So this is a technique that is uh, widely used when you can decompose your systems into minute level tasks and then you can use it basically to roll up the tasks and get your top level estimates. 